Modern fuel injection is amazing, but before injectors, ECUs to control them, and fuel pumps, motorcycles used to use carburetors. Some small bikes and two strokes like this one still do. Today on MC Garage, we talk about carburetors. For those of you that have an older motorcycle or a modern two stroke, the most confusing and intimidating task is probably jetting a carburetor. To some, it amounts to black magic. But if you know the theory and the reasons for every circuit in your carburetor, and you take it step by step, it's not that difficult. Today, we're gonna to start a multi-part series on how to tune or jet a carburetor. Step one is understanding how everything works and what all the parts inside do. So how does the carburetor mix that fuel and air? In simplest terms, the air comes through the Venturi and mixes with fuel supplied by the carburetor in a specific ratio. That ratio is called the stoichiometric ratio. Huge word. That ratio is theoretically between 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. In reality, your motorcycle runs better probably around 13 to 13 and a half ratio. This mixture is achieved by using smaller orifices or jets to mix the fuel with the air. First and foremost, there's the place the fuel is pulled from and that's the float bowl. The float inside here sets the level of the fuel from which the jets pull from. The float operates the needle valve right here letting the fuel flow when the level drops, and when the correct level is reached, it stops. On the bottom of the carburetor, typically have two jets, the main jet and the pilot jet. This little guy hiding in here, that's the pilot. The pilot jet handles the mixture from idle to about 15 to 20% throttle. How it works is, fuel comes in through the front, through this tiny orifice here, and pulls fuel up through the pilot jet. When the bike is cold, the pilot jet's gonna need some help. That's where the choke comes in. It's a plunger right on the side of the carburetor, Pull it up, it opens up this orifice right here and lets more fuel in. Once the bike's warm, plunger goes down. On the side of the carburetor, you have two adjustment screws. One is your idle screw. The other one is your mixture screw. Now this one basically adds or removes fuel or air, depending on where it's located. If it's on the engine side, it's a fuel screw. If it's on the airbox side, it's an air screw. Either way, it does the same thing. It fine tunes the idle circuit and the low end. Right next to the pilot jet, you've got the main jet. This guy is screwed right into the needle jet, which is also called the nozzle. We're gonna talk about the needle jet in a second, but right now, we're gonna talk about the main. The main basically provides all the fuel from about 80% throttle all the way to wide open. Handling the mixture between the pilot and the main jet is the needle jet and the needle. This is your mid-range or about 20% to 80% throttle. Within the nozzle, the needle moves up and down to vary the orifice size to meter the fuel. The tapered shape of the needle is what does all the work. When the throttle is closed, the hole in the nozzle is really small. As the throttle opens, the hole gets bigger and lets more fuel in. The needle sits on a slide that moves up and down with throttle position. This slide controls how much airflow moves through the carburetor. It can be controlled by a cable, like on this flat slide, or by air flowing around a throttle butterfly on a CV or constant velocity carburetor. Here, a vacuum is created and sucks that slide up depending on how much airflow is moving through the carburetor. That's all the major pieces of our carburetor and what they do. On the next episode of MC Garage, we're gonna cover tuning the idle circuit. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them down below. If you like what we're doing, hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified of a new episode. Thanks for watching.